You want to make $50 million selling violent video games to kids, go for it. We'll put you on the cover of Wired magazine. But you want to make half a million dollars trying to cure kids of malaria, and you're considered a <laughs> parasite yourself. I really never thought about the fact that it seems normal to me that a CEO of an oil company or a big shot banker are making huge amounts of money, but when an NGO leader is rich, I think of him as a corrupted jerk. Shouldn't someone who is trying to save the planet earn more money than the one who is polluting it? Actually, I'd rather give my money to a saint than to a master of evil. But at the same time, I feel really conflicted about people who work for charity being paid a lot. It's like they work for a charity, doing good. Therefore, they should be good people and work for little or no money. I mean, you're asking for my money, but you earn 10 times as much as I do. However, this is completely irrational on my part. I don't think money belongs just to evil people, but at the same time, I don't feel like charity workers should be rich. And that's a big flaw in our vision of charity. We sent all the best business school graduates straight to the private sector, leaving nonprofits the worst ones. So, of course, nonprofits will generate smaller amounts of money than regular companies. That's pure logic. You can be a really nice guy, but if Coca Cola allows you to earn 10 times more money than Greenpeace, well, you're gonna work for Coca Cola and then give a couple of bucks to Greenpeace. We allow people to make huge profits doing any number of things that will hurt the poor, but we want to crucify anyone who wants to make money helping them. It was Dan Palora who said that as response to media's attacking him for making money while running a charity. Dan Palora is an American entrepreneur, author, and humanitarian activist. He gave an amazing TED talk and is best known for his involvement in multi-day charitable events with the long-distance breast cancer three-day walks, AIDS rides bicycle journeys, and out-of-the-darkness suicide prevention night walks. His company raised $582 million from 1994 to 2002. Just the breast cancer three-day walks raised over $193 million. Not bad. But his organization fell apart in 2002 as the main sponsors moved away from them. The reason? Because the media discovered that Dan Palora and his team were being paid a nice amount of money. And that's how 350 charity workers lost their job, because we don't want people working for non-profits to make a lot of money. And this really makes you think. The truth is that most of us want to help the children in need, the animals, the environment, drug addicts or homeless. But usually we don't want to help them enough to give up on our nice paycheck. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with taking care of ourselves first. But as of today, you have to choose between having a helpful job or a helpful paycheck. You can't really make a living of working in a non-profit organization, because non-profits are closed down when they pay generously their workers. Maybe it's time to reconsider this idea. Another thing we don't want is charities to spend our money in marketing. If I'm gonna give my money to UNICEF, it's to feed the poor, not to get a commercial during the Super Bowl. Again, this makes perfect sense, until you take a closer look. Remember the breast cancer three-day walks that raised over $193 million? Well, this event wouldn't have possibly raised 10% of this money if they wouldn't have promoted it with full-page ads in the New York Times, the Boston Globe and in primetime radio and TV. A dollar spent in marketing might actually mean $10 donated for the cost. And this is why we shouldn't feel betrayed when our money doesn't go straight to the needy. Especially since nonprofits sometimes need this money to face powerful enemies. Not everybody wants the war, hunger or AIDS to disappear. This is what the French NGO Médecins du Monde discovered the hard way when their campaign against overpriced medicines has been censored by advertising companies. The campaign displayed catch lines such as Cancer brings up to 2.4 billion euros each year in France. Or, with 1 billion euros of profit, you can live comfortably thanks to hepatitis C. Médecins du Monde had to move their campaign online, and then they got a huge response, including media cover. So, even if censorship actually provoked a stress and effect and helped their purpose, it made it clear that some NGOs are struggling against many difficulties to get their message heard. And this is why it is important, if we can afford it, to give. <laughs>